everyone. Today I'm here to share with you my May book haul. This is a huge book haul. I say that every month. I know. It's ridiculous. But I'm, I'm like serious. I think there's like 30 books in here. I didn't count. But either way, there's a lot of them. So let's get right to it. I did buy some books this month. Only like five, but still. That's a lot for me because I try not to buy a ton. But I'm going to show you those first. Of course, the first book I bought is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Maas. This is the three and a half book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. It's kind of a novella. It's like a filler book, if you will, in between, you know, her first three books in the series and then she continues on with it. So this one kind of sets the path for other characters and things like that. I did enjoy it. I didn't think it was necessary 100%. I did film a book review on it in case you're interested in watching it. I'll link it right here. Either way, I love these characters. I love the romance in this book. I love the world. I just don't know how necessary this book was but nevertheless, I did enjoy it. The next book I bought is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This is the second book in the Creekwood series. The first book is Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I'm sure you've heard a lot about because it was a movie this year. In this book, we follow our main character, Leah, who was in Simon. And this one, like the first book I talked about, I enjoyed, but... I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to love it. Leah is a character that's kind of hard to love. She has a lot of, she's kind of snarky and she's blunt, which I appreciated, but some parts of her I didn't really love, but I still love the writing in this book and I love the characters again, like I talked about Frost and Starlight, and I did overall enjoy it, but I just wanted to like it a little bit more, so I don't want to say it was a letdown per se, but I just wanted Leah to have more growth in this book if that makes any sense so I do have a master review on this one as well because you know why not but I still enjoyed it I will say this is my favorite cover of hers by far with the color and Leah and it's just beautiful I love it but I don't know why I didn't love it as much as I wanted to this book I bought let me see if I can say this right the anatomical shape of a heart by Jen Bennett that is a tongue twister for sure Jen Bennett has written two previous books that I really really love Alex approximately and starry eyes and this is one of her earlier ones and it was honestly a really good price on Amazon so I was like I have to buy it and I have to read it because I enjoy her book so much I don't know a ton about this book other than it's about a grunting Beatrix and shackling a museum sponsored scholarship contest drawing actual cadavers. She tries to sneak her way into the hospital's wheeled body program and misses the last metro home. She meets a boy who turns her summer plans upside down. I'm expecting to really love this one because I just love Jen Bennett's writing style and I really want to read all of her books. Hence, I had to buy this one because I mean, I just, I'm a sucker. I am such a sucker for YA contemporaries. Like, it's ridiculous. The last book I bought this month was Ash Prentice by Laura Sebastian. I was not planning to buy this one and then kind of after reading after rereading A Torch Against the Night and then Quarter Frost the Starlight, my love of YA fantasy kind of crept up again and this was a new release and I was interested in it so I was like, hey, why not buy it? Because that's the motto of my life pretty much. Um, this one I don't know a ton about. <laughs> Sends a trend here. Um, this about is, oh my goodness, I don't know how you pronounce this character's name. The Theodosia? She basically is a, she basically it starts when she's six and her country is invaded and her mother was the fire cream was murdered and then um, on that day the Kaiser took her family and her name and then Theo was crowned the Ash Princess, a title of shame to wear in her new life as a prisoner. I'm sure what's going to happen, obviously she's going to grow up and she's going to reclaim the crown because I do love YA fantasies but they are somewhat predictable. I have heard this one is very brutal with the treatment of um our main character I can't pronounce her name and just I've heard it's like kind of darker. I haven't heard too too much about it so if you've read this book let me know. Moving on to all the books I got sent this month. It's a lot. I am so thankful that I'm able to get these books so thank you so much to each individual publisher for sending me them. I am internally internally grateful for them and I'm really excited about all of them. The first book I got sent by Simon & Schuster was Save the Day by Morgan Matson. They sent me a signed first edition. That boy is signed. I was not expecting that at all. Morgan Matson, if you don't know, is a YA contemporary author, aka, you know, my like junk food stuff. I just love it. And this is her newest book that's coming out next month. It's about a wedding. I think it's been, it's being pitched as Father of the Bride meets 16 Candles, which I am all there for. If you haven't seen Father of the Bride, what are you doing? If you haven't seen 16 Candles, what are you doing? Definitely my favorite Molly Ringwald movie. Oh, I don't know. I like Pretty in Pink too. Mm, it's hard to say, but either way, love both of those movies. So it's about a girl that his sister is getting married at, you know, 
their house and I think it's all about family and stuff like that. Even, look on the back too, it's a little beagle. How adorable the. And then if you open up the flap, it's got this on it. Grand Central Station, it's like a cartoon. So I'm guessing her mom or something is a maybe a comic book artist or maybe she is, I don't know. But either way, I, if you don't know, I'm a wedding photographer. So reading about weddings, I adore. So I cannot wait to read this. Definitely planning on reading it next month. Huge, huge thank you to Simon Schuster. Book Adri sent to me, and that is Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. This is the second book in the Beartown series. I actually just read Beartown a couple weeks ago and was floored by how much I loved it. I have read a few of Frederick Bachman's books in the past. He is a Swedish author, and he writes kind of quirky, I wouldn't say grim books, but they all have like a quirky sense of them, but they all kind of have a deep deepness to them if that makes any sense. I'm sure if you've heard of him you've heard of A Man Called Uva which is one book that I love but Beartown the first book in the series because I can't tell you what this one is about because it's the second book. Beartown is basically it's a town called Beartown and it's a hockey town. They live and breathe ice hockey and really covet all these high schoolers that are competing in ice hockey and they're actually going to like the finals this year and it's a really really big deal and basically I don't want to spoil it but I feel like I should because I feel like I should say because there's a big trigger warning in this book rape happens in this book so just a trigger warning for you in general if you with that topic and what ha and after that the town gets divided of who to believe and what's the right thing to do and I will say this is his most serious work it does have his it does have his great quirky sense of writing which I adore but it's definitely much more heavier and deals with a lot of heavier topics and I really love the way he wrote it. He wrote it so amazingly. Like I thought he just handled the topic perfectly and the way he wrote it and I just cannot wait to read the second one. I've already just started it. But either way I'd say if you're looking for a just amazing book that is yes you think when you read the synopsis of it it's gonna be about ice hockey. It's not. It's that's maybe what the book's about but the core of it is about all these people that live in this town and how different each one of them are and what they believe. I could go on about the series because I'm obsessed with it but either way would highly recommend the series so I can not wait to read the second one. This one comes out in June as well. The next book, Source Fire book sent to me and I am so excited about it and it is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I, like I said, I've been getting into YA fantasy again or like attempting it and I've been hearing a lot about this book and I saw the cover and I heard what it was about and I was like, Yes, and they thank you so much to Source Fire Books. This book is a hard book to explain. Basically in the front it says two worlds will fall, two queens will rise. This book is set in two different timelines. So we follow um, two main characters. We have Janine Marielle who risks everything. He exposes her ability to perform all these seven kinds of elemental magic and basically the only people that can have these powers are um, a pair of prophesized queens. Um, a queen of light and a queen of blood and to prove that she is a sun queen she must endure these seven trials. So that is the like way back like it happens way back in the day. And then a thousand years later after Rael proves that she's um, sun queen she's obviously gone by now we have another character named um, Elena who is a bounty hunter and basically I'm guessing she's going to be the blood queen and she has to endure trials as well so it's about these two women that are connecting even though they're a thousand years apart and we're discovering both of and we're discovering both of their trials to prove that they are the queen one the sun queen one the blood queen either way that sounds a hundred percent right out of my alley like I've heard people say this is kind of like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire with like the different trials and stuff and I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff so I cannot wait to read this one. Plan to read it next month. You're gonna hear me say that a lot in this video. Next book that St. Martin's Press sent to me is How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. This is kind of a chiclet romance book and it's basically about this woman named Marker Jacobson who's about to step into this bright future she's had. She's getting married and all these other things and then I think she gets into a plane crash I think. I'm not sure and then she's and then the hospital everything changes. She, I think she maybe falls in love with her physical therapist. I'm not sure. Basically by the title of this book is How to Walk Away. Maybe she's having to walk away with a toxic relationship, with people in her past, with things that happened to her before this big accident. Maybe this accident kind of, you know, maybe she had an epiphany with this accident and things are changing and she's learning how to walk away. That's just a guesstimate. Either way, again, I'm going to read this very soon. I can't wait. I mean, I love a good romance and self-discovery book. I'm all for that. The next book, Berkeley book sent to me and that is the Kiss Quote. Quotient? 
Hopefully I've said that right. By Helen Huang. This book has been getting a lot of buzz lately here on booktube. It's like another kind of the hating game type of book where it's romance and very steamy. And again, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a lot of books. I'm just a sucker for all of them, I guess. Um, in this book we follow our main character Stella who comes up with algorithms to predict um, customer purchases and then um, then but she also has Asperger's which is great to read about because you know that's kind of a thing that's very very near and dear to my heart if you're aware but she is because she has Asperger's getting close to someone's really difficult for her so she decides that she needs lots of practice with a professional so she hires an escort Michael Fond to help her check off all the boxes on her lesson plans to teach her like all these things I think a lot of like little things um either way I'm guessing they probably fall in love I just can't wait to read about it because of romance steamy the fact that she has Asperger's that's all so so amazing so definitely gonna read this one very very soon perfect summer book in my opinion and I have Dear Mrs. Bird by A.G. Pierce this book's actually a it comes out in July but it's already been out I think in the UK for a couple of years now I'm not too sure which is very weird with publishing worlds of you know sometimes they'll release a book in a different country if it goes really well but either way this one comes out in the US in July and here's this little debut set in London during World War II about an adventurous young woman who becomes a secret advice columnist and that's all I need to know and that's all I want to know it sounds like it's gonna be amazing look at the freaking cover I'm obsessed with it I oh, I'm definitely gonna read this in July because it's you know, being released in July but it just sounds perfect I love I love that I'm branching out and reading more about historical things. I think a year ago if I would have learned that this book was taking place in 1940 I would have been like nope can't read it's you know it's historical. Now I'm like yeah give me that so uh, super excited for it. and I love the yellowness of this book. I love yellow if you can already tell. Then I have The Lido by Libby Page. Again I think this is another book that was released a couple years ago maybe in the UK and now it's being brought out in the US. I'm not 100% sure on that so please don't quote me. <laughs> Either way when I got this book usually whenever I get arcs or something like that they come with like a little mailer letting you know about the book and things like that. On this mailer it said if you love a man called Uva and if you love Eleanor Oliphant's Cooley Fine you will love this book. And I was like just targeted me 100% because I love both of those books. So I don't know a lot about this book but I just know the fact I just know that the like this book is kind of like those other two books I said so I was like I'm sold. And here's this one novel that reminds us we're never too old to make new friends or to make a difference. So I think it follows the main character Rose, Rose Rosemary who's 86 and she's lived in London all of her life but everything is changing so I think she's just making new friends and living her life and it just sounds so heartwarming I can't take it and I love books like that so I'm definitely gonna plan to read this in July because it comes out on July 10th. Ugh, give me all of the heartwarming stories like I just am a sucker. I'm gonna say that so many times. Thriller novel and that is The Opposite of Here by Tara Alter Brando. This I think is about like a thriller that takes place on a cruise ship which scares the crap out of me. I've read a thriller on a cruise ship before and it just ugh. I mean you can't go anywhere you're stuck you're on a boat even on the freaking thing there's no hiding on a cruise ship not even from yourself. Oh, that's scary enough for me. <laughs> so I definitely need to check this out because I have yet to read a Tara Altabrando book so I need to make that happen. Then Penguin so graciously sent to me the first two books in the, or actually I don't know if this is a duology or not, I think it might be, Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier and the sequel Smoke in the Sun. I have read Flame in the Mist. This is their new paperback edition which I actually really enjoy. I love the cherry blossoms. I love that we have you know a diverse girl on the cover. Um, and I liked it. I think I rated it like a four, four and a half, but as time goes on, I don't know if I like it that much. So I don't know if I'm gonna read the sequel to this one. Basically what I thought this book was, was like kind of like a Mulan. It's really not. It's kind of similar in the vein where we have a female disguise herself as a guy to infiltrate like this thing, kind of like Mulan, but it's much more deeper than that. And I do enjoy it so I don't know if I'm going to read Smoke in the Sun but either way I'm happy to have it. Oh and this has deco edges I just noticed that but then um I also have What I Left Behind by Allison McGee. I actually just did a giveaway for this on my Instagram so be sure to always check my Instagram because I'm always doing giveaways. This book is very very short if you can see like it's told only like in 200 pages I want to say and this book I want I'm gonna read very very soon because the fact that it is 200 pages and just the message behind this book sounds so amazing. It's about this guy named Will who is a walker he walks all the time then um, there are some places that will can't walk um, he can't walk past the bridge on 4th Street the store with the shelves and 100 Chinese blessing his friend play his house but basically I think what happens is I think his friend gets attacked or 
raped so another trigger warning for you there and he decides to start doing like small acts of kindness for all these people that he walks past all the time and this is told I want to say in exactly a hundred chapters I think and then exactly 100 pages each chapter so it's not told in verse but it's told like see how short these pages are so I think we have just different pages with 100 pages on them and I think it's told like in 200 pages I don't know but either way a fact of acts of kindness and this sounds like it's gonna be a hard-hitting book but it also has a great meaning behind it which I love so I definitely just need to read this soon because this is gonna take no time at all oh I forgot to mention I also have some non bookish items to show you so my bookmark actually reached out to me and sent me a couple of their bookmarks if you have heard of my bookmark please look them up on Instagram I know there's so many bookmark um, people and you know companies but these are truly unique bookmarks I've noticed them for a while I've always wanted one so my bookmarks they always come in this box like this I picked out two of them so I got the Harry Potter one well, one of the Harry Potter ones so what's great about my bookmarks is this is what they look like so if you can see this is Quidditch feet Harry Potter's Quidditch feet and he's got his broom right here and this has a quote from Dumbledore on it so if you can see that's what it looks like so you can either when you're reading a book put this at the bottom of your book so it's got like feet sticking out of it how freaking precious is that or you can just move them up to the top whatever way you want to do I mean that's freaking cute as well like what is this like it's sad how obsessed with this I am like you should call somebody <laughs> but either way I mean I had to pick this one because it's Harry Potter and because of the unique factor I'm obsessed with them another one I got I'm equally obsessed with and it is a mermaid fin and it says I belong to the sea and it's got a mermaid fin on it I got this one because it's summertime and what summery mermaids are summery so this one again you could put the mermaid fin right on the bottom look how adorable it is or you can move it right up to the top I mean how <laughs> How cute gonna get it get free freaking cute so yeah I got I was like I'm gonna take so many book scram photos with this it's ridiculous so either way thank you so much to my bookmark for sending me these they have so many other ones they have like Alice in Wonderland ones they have like um Dorothy ones they have other Harry Potter ones they have cat ones they have like a plethora so I would highly recommend you check them out because I mean so stinking cute I got sent the complete um paperback copies editions I don't know of the darkest mind series by Alexander Bracken look I'm holding them up completely backwards for you um so we have the darkest minds by Alexander Bracken we have never fade we have in the afterlight and then we have this brand new one of the all the novellas through the dark so if you put them all together E A O K dark so I have read no I have not finished this series I'm bad so if you when I first started book two these books were really popular so I love Dark Mind Never Fade I have yet to finish in the afterlight and um, the darkest minds is becoming a um, movie soon so that's interesting but either way thank you so much to Disney High Premium for sending me these and I think the paper bag editions are beautiful and I love sins such as this by Ellen Hopkins this is usually known for writing verse books I believe this book basically says this is a fabulous sex filled masterpiece of mystery and romance so I am not sure if this is YA or adult by, by the title of it, it sounds like it's an adult book and it sounds like it's kind of an adult mystery thriller maybe even kind of like a sexy mystery thriller I don't know I have yet to read Ellen Hopkins books I think this is her first book not in verse please let me know if you know that penguin also sent me a whole stack of middle grade books which I'm very very excited about the first one I'm obsessed with the cover and that is I'm all unbound by Aisha Saheed look at this cover I don't know what any of these are about honestly um and I think with middle grade books you don't need to know much about it you just want to go into it. I think this is gonna be about self-discovery and things like that I also have the mad wolf's daughter by Diane McGraws which I'm not a fan of this cover I'll be honest with you but I can see this could be appealing to like middle grade kids because that's the target demographic this one I'm gonna guess is about mad wolf's daughter <laughs> then I had the night diary by Vera I am so sorry I'm not gonna try to pronounce that at all because I'm gonna butcher that but I love the cover of this one I don't know what this one is about again oh there's even I guess it's about India that's great Nisha's journey um, and Pakistan so this is on the eve of her 12th birthday Nisha receives a journal to place the record of her thoughts she can never seem to say aloud as she starts to see the world through her older eyes so that sounds amazing and the last one they sent me is um Harvory by Jacqueline Whittleson she also wrote I forget what book she wrote 
Brown Girl Dreaming, which was told in verse, I believe. This one is not. But this is basically about um, six kids who are sent to a room for a weekly chat. And then I think they grow up and things are happening. Harbor B digs in deep to show of how many America's social issues can affect today's kids. So all these sound awesome. All these sound very diverse and very important for middle graders to be reading. So I'm definitely going to check them out. I'm thinking about doing like a middle grade month, one month this year. Or maybe next year. The month's almost, the year's almost over. <laughs> the last two books that were sent to me were sent to me by Quark. <laughs> they sound amazing. The first one is Night of the Living Truckies. They thought space was the final frontier, but they were wrong. Some of the guests is Star Trek with zombies. How amazing. And the other one is Con Artist. Um, and this one I still can't quite grasp. I think this is about like a Comic Con and like zombies are happening or something. I don't. No, I mean, this is written by a guy who has written comics like The Amazing Spider-Man, Marvel Zombies, Deadpool vs. The Punisher. I'm not sure. Like I said this takes place during a con and then I think things happen. Either way, definitely want to check this out. I might give this to my brother because he loves stuff like this. Okay, last set of books or books will send me in book boxes. Let's go through these quickly because this is long. The first one I got uppercase is The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Goo. This is about a teenage girl that has her summer all mapped out and then she gets in trouble and she has to work on her dad's um, Food truck, which sounds awesome. I love like food truck. Like I don't know. You ever watch that show, The Great, The Great Food Truck Race? Amazing show. Love it. But it sounds awesome and again diverse. Look at the cover. Obsessed with this cover. I got Sky in the Deep by Adrienne Young, which got sent to me in my Outcrate box. This is like a Viking tale about a girl that is in a, like a kind of Viking tribe, and she's been told to fight, and then she sees her dead brother on the battlefield, and she's fighting him, and things are happening. I heard really, really good things about this book. Like it's kind of medievalish. Well, I can't say medieval and Viking, can I? That was not in the same time period. No. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it sounds awesome. And then, also, I see this got sent with Alcrate. Oh, I'm pretty sure my mom's gone. But it's Catching Stars um, by she's a yeah, it's a powerful witch with powerful abilities, and she does all these things. I'm not sure about it, but either way, it both sound like amazing YA fantasy books. Then, actually, in April's Fairy Loot Box, because I got it kind of late, I got Beyond a Dark and Shore by Jessica Leake. This is about a girl that has to fight and then she has to team up with her like greatest enemy which basically is a trope I'm always there for. I've heard really good things about this book so I'm gonna have to check it out with all the other many fantasy books I have. Lastly I have my two book of the month picks. So the first one is The Perfect Mother by Amy and Malloy. This book is a thriller book. It's about become friends because they're all like due in May and they all have their babies in May so they call themselves the May Mothers and they meet up every single month when their newborns are you know born and then basically one of the babies gets kidnapped and it's all about that. So it sounds like an amazing book. It's already being talked about a movie and I really want to read it but I'm very scared to because that thought like I have a kid so that like just the thought of it scares me to death. So I'm gonna have to really gear myself up to read this because I want to read it but I'm just gonna have to like be like this is fiction but just knowing that it could happen like just scares me to pieces. I mean, the other book I got is another mystery thriller, and that is Still Lives by Marie Hummel. And I've honestly heard not the great things about this book. The book is about a young editor at the Los Angeles Art Museum finds herself being pulled in the disturbing and dangerous world of a famous artist who goes missing on the opening night of ex of their exhibition. So that's what it's about. I haven't heard really good things about this book. Those are all the books I either bought received in in May. It's a lot. It's a long video. I apologize. If you've heard of any of these books, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.